Sonia from India. Sirs, if I were to take you back to the start of your invest investing careers, I assume it would have been harder for potential acquisition opportunities to come by. The question I would like to ask you, sirs, is how did you ensure then that you had good enough deal flows coming to you to be able to choose from? I have one more question. The Berkshire subsidiaries do not have a retirement policy. What are the implications of this on retaining and motivating employees who are potential successors to senior management? First question about deal flow, which is not a, it's, it's a term I actually don't like very much because I, we don't think of them as deals exactly. We, we, it, 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 uh, that has a little too much of the connotation of something to be bought and then again something to be sold. But, but we do like acquisition opportunities and, and really that's just achieving that uh, so that we get the calls when we should get the calls. And there aren't lots of those because we're talking about good-sized businesses. We're talking about owners that love their businesses. And, and it's going to happen occasionally, but it's going to happen a few times a year probably. Uh, I think in the U.S. now that we get a pretty reasonable percentage of the calls that we should get. And that was not true 20 or 30 years ago. We didn't hear from anybody 20 or 30 years ago uh, to speak of because we were looked at much more as being a marketable securities operation and we just weren't we weren't as well known uh, it feeds on itself obviously as if we if we acquire companies and the people from whom we acquired them are happy about the deal you know we're going to hear it from more people we bought our first furniture operation in 1983 that really led to four other transactions because the people in the first one were happy and they talked to us about the second one and the people in the second one were happy and so on so you know it's like a Charlie always describes compound interest as being like you know being at the top of a very of a very large hill uh, with wet snow and starting with a snowball and getting it rolling downhill and that's a little bit like the acquisition situation works uh, we've been on a by being around 38 years, it's a, it's been a it's been a long, it's been a high mountain, and in terms of the uh, length the snowball is going, by now it's going at a pretty good clip, and it's pretty good size, and it tracks a lot of snow, uh, and that's that's good for us. Outside the United States, we do not seem to be on the radar screen, so we don't seem to hear about those as as, as much. But we we're hearing about enough in the United States. Uh, it's not a flow in the sense of I don't hear about one a week. You know, I don't probably hear about one a month, but the ones we want to hear about, uh, most of them I think we're, we're getting the calls now. I think we're getting a higher percentage of the calls now than ever in our history we would have gotten. Uh, and, you know, that's all to the good. And if we can do the same thing outside this country, that would be a plus too. But, but this country is a big market, and uh, we'll just try and spread the word further. And Charlie, what was that other question? That well, he talked some about deal flow, and uh, there's a general assumption that it, it must be easy to somehow arrange things that you just sat behind a desk and people brought in one wonderful opportunity after another and you finally selected two out of a hundred and uh, it would be a virtual cinch. That was the attitude in venture capital until the last two or three years. Uh, we didn't have any of that in the early days, right, Warren? No, that's right. We were finding our own securities, and, uh, and we were just looking at the public markets to see as what was available in securities. And when we started buying companies, there must have been 20 years when we didn't buy more than one or two a year. Yeah, they were, they were fairly few and far between. And, and we didn't have the money to buy very big ones either. Uh, I mean, it was a big deal when we bought Associated Cotton Shops for what in effect was four million, or when we bought Hoshul Cone when we had to come up with six million of equity, as I remember, for that deal. And National Indemnity itself 
uh, was seven million for national indemnity, and I think a million for a million seven for national fire and marine. And I mean that was that was all we could handle in those days. So the the snowball is you know it, it's built up as it's gone down the mountain, and uh, we hope there's a lot of mountain left and a lot of wet snow, and we're we're looking for it. To but it's fair to say that we were rooting around for those opportunities. We weren't sitting behind our desks and waiting for some commission salesman to come in and present us with opportunities to sign our name. Uh, I can't think of anything we bought in the early days that way. No. no. Warren, you chased down Jack Ringwald, didn't you? But at any rate, this process is not easy. And practically <laughs> anything where you sit behind that desk and this wonderful deal flow is just coming by, you're in a very dangerous seat.